another QI compilation show. I've queued up my favourite questions from the quixotic quagmire of Series Q. After all, it's about quality, not quantity. <laughs> How good are you at multitasking? Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> okay. I, uh, I Here we go. Oh, I see. Yeah. I didn't know it was going to be tested on. <laughs> <laughs> Just volunteered yourself, OK? So I want you to take this uh, stack from here and recreate it exactly the same on this one, and you can have to move them one at a time, OK? Oh, right. But while you're doing it, I want you to recite the alphabet backwards. <gasps> Ooh. Well, I, I can't do that anyway. <laughs> oh. I mean, I don't think I can do it forwards, like... A... B... No, no, so you don't understand how the game functions. <laughs> um... <laughs> Find out that Andrew's a toddler. <laughs> <laughs> Just took him off and put him on the yeah. counter. <laughs> a B C. I can't do it backwards. You missed it backwards. Z. And put them on the middle one. This is me. Here we go again. Z Y. Keep them on the backwards. X. One. Move them one at a time. No. Middle one. What's wrong with this? No, don't help him. <laughs> I love this, because as I said... Z, I... Y, X, W... <laughs> v, <laughs> U... OK, <laughs> <laughs> L. Don't pretend you could do why, this. So why did you... you say... Why did you say that you are good at multitasking? I'm a man and I like to brag. <laughs> I had a moment on a flight last week, actually, when I was flying from Aberdeen to Shetland, and I was with my tour manager, who's also a big chap, and we sit next to each other, cos we're pals, and there was hardly anyone else on the flight. It was only a small plane. And the stewardess came over, and she said, uh, Mr Manford, Mr Isaac, she said, would you mind separating and sitting on either side of the plane? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Weight distribution. Weight distribution? <laughs> as a wing. <laughs> so he's going to land like this if we... <laughs> well, that's what you should have done. We will at the start. Yeah. But during the flight, we're going to set you a series of challenges. <laughs> <laughs> Zigzagging about the plane. First time in the history of the world where turbulence is a person. Yeah. <laughs> when you're a doctor, you only have to know how one like, organism works. But when you're a vet, yes. people come in with, like, oh, my stick insect's got eczema, and then someone else is like, <laughs> this horse is going to explode! <laughs> <laughs> it's going to blow! <laughs> a bit ticking. <laughs> That's the ultimate Trojan horse. Yeah. <laughs> I think animals are like cars. They all work the same way, really. We've spent a fortune on my cat. I've spent over a thousand pounds in the last two years on my cat. A thousand pounds. Trying to make it into yeah. a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's what's wrong with the bloody thing apart from it's a cat? <laughs> They're hard to come by cats, aren't they? After all. <laughs> you know those uh, bits of elastic that keep chicken legs together like that. It swallowed one of those and it went all through its system, right. tied up like like a tie, like tied it all up. Like... Anyway, she died, so that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> well, I wasn't going to pay a grand. She... Come on. <laughs> Up until 1826, the Palace of Westminster kept uh, all its financial records on something called tally sticks. So you had a stick and you split it in two when you issued a debt, and when the payment was made, the two sticks were tied back together again. Wow. Uh, but eventually, of course, paper records superseded the need uh, for these, and now they'd got a lot of old wood, so they decided to get rid of it. Uh, the obvious idea was to burn it, so on the 16th of October, 1834, the clerk of the works, who's in various uh, records called Mr Wibbly or Mr Woobly, uh, he ordered two cartloads of these tally sticks to Mr. be burned. Mr Wibbly Wobbly. Mr Wobbly Wobbly, yes. <laughs> Mr Wibbly Wobbly, get rid of the sticks. Get rid of the sticks, you want? <laughs> So Mr Wibbly Wobbly decided to burn two cartloads of these tally sticks in the basement staves at the Palace of Westminster, and the resulting fire burnt down both the House of Lords and the House of Commons. Only <laughs> what? what an idiot, Mr yeah. Wibbly Wobbly. Didn't feel good about it. <laughs> he should have known. Yeah. What have I done? <laughs> <laughs> Put a 
you entrust this job to? <laughs> now, don't get angry. <laughs> they better not have been Mr. Wibbly Wobbly. <laughs> So here's a nice thing, apart from the toad sausages, one of the ways they're thinking now of saving the quoll is to turn them into pets. Um, there are people who say that you should have them instead of a cat, and in fact, they're, they're rather sweet. They can be trained, they can use a litter tray. Um, they weigh about the same. Uh, yeah, sweet, yeah. really sweet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have you it's... got your foot sticking out from under the duvet and that gets <laughs> hold of you? <laughs> they do have the second biggest bite force quotient. <laughs> <laughs> so how hard they can bite relative to the size oh, of any animal. Good for children, then. <laughs> yeah. Second only to the Tasmanian devil. Oh, uh, <laughs> what's, what's the one on the right doing to the one on the right? <laughs> I believe that's the beginning of improv. <laughs> <laughs> the one on the left's not keen on it. No. <laughs> the second left's going, look at him, look at him! <laughs> so look at him or I will torture! <laughs> anyway, there used to be a thing called the Group of Sixty, and they were Athenian wits who got together uh, and exchanged jokes. And so one of the ways you would tell a joke in Athens, you would say, the Sixty said, and so on. Um, but the very first joke book that Europe ever had was published by... Anybody have a guess? We are talking in the mid-1400s. Lazy Christ Bird. Uh, well... <laughs> the Vatican oh. uh, published it. It was utterly obscene. They had... What? They had a sort of joke club called the Bujali. Uh, it was literally a fib factory. There was a papal secretary called Poggio Bracciolini, and he kept a record of all these jokes. And he published it, 273 puns and uh, jokes, mostly the usual stuff, farts, erections, obesity... Rubbish at drunkers. reading, isn't he? Look at him. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, is that Athena? The frame of my picture has fallen on my head. <laughs> What sort of business would you want to use a queer plunger? <laughs> <laughs> I once had a nightmare with a plunger. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a New Year's Eve party and then the next day our toilet was blocked. Mm. And I thought, oh, I'll nail this. I'd never used a plunger before. Yeah, right. Difficult to use. Yeah, I thought I'd just whack it down there. Whacked it down and it suctioned just onto the bottom of the toilet. Brought it up. All I had was the piece of stick. <laughs> <laughs> and now I didn't just have to unblock the toilet. I had to get my hand in there to oh. get the... <laughs> What can't I hear you do in space? <laughs> Screaming sound. <laughs> <laughs> so you can hear screaming. Well, it's a vacuum, right? Sound can't reverberate. But there are conditions where you could hear a scream, and that is what I'm going to come to. Uh, yes, I know. But she for got the... you there. No, she has <laughs> not got me there because the question I was presented by my learned friend yes. was, "What can you hear in space?" And so scream, and I said, "Because space is completely silent," which he said, and I went, "Did I just talk to myself?" No, because I thought. <laughs> I did not say... Oh, what God, you... I wish I was in space! <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I did not say what you might be wearing. Oh, well, for the love of God, Sandy! <laughs> <laughs> this is like and this picture was a clue. So, sound is caused by the vibration of molecules, and if you didn't have a spacesuit on, it would be almost impossible to hear anything at all. However, Astronauts can talk to each other by touching helmets. Uh, so. <laughs> I'm off, all right. All right. So the sound vibrations they travel through the air inside the spacesuits and inside the glass, yeah. enough for them to be able to communicate with raised voices. Mm. And in fact, NASA teach this to the astronauts as a sort of backup in case radio communication fails. Sure. So we're going to try it. You both so you got... don't get any lesbians in space. <laughs> you both got you both got helmets. Pop them on. <laughs> <laughs> that smells really bad. <laughs> right. They're enormous. Much so, bigger than mine. Try and. <laughs> Uh, 
<laughs> it's much Sta bigger, but mine looks exactly like Caesar. Stand up and... <laughs> Up and touch helmets and see if you can if it helps you to hear. Now now talk to each other. Hello. I've always loved you. <laughs> <laughs> I just like <laughs> does, it make, does it make a difference? Hello. 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 I, not really, Sandy, I'll be honest. <laughs> we can't hear you. <laughs> Take it off. No. <laughs> yeah, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Could you feel the vibrations through the helmet? Uh, I don't think I could really hear, but I don't really understand her at the best of times. So. No, that's just. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to meet vomiting Larry? No. <laughs> <laughs> what? Have you got a thing about? Vomit? I'm just closing my eyes. You continue. No, no, we're not actually going to show, Bob. We're just going to oh, okay. talk about it a lot. Oh, I thought uh, somebody called Larry was just going to come. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a volcano or some kind of weird of beetle or something. It's not a volcano. It is a humanoid simulated vomiting system developed by UK's Health and Safety Laboratory in Derbyshire by researcher Dr. Kat Mackerson Booth. And there is Kat, and there is vomiting oh, Larry. Sorry. Right Hello. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Cat, I believe that Larry can vomit on command. He can. But, uh, why would you invent such a thing? So we're, we're looking at infection transmission, so we want to identify how far vomit spreads so that we can help clear it all back up again and prevent transmission of fluid. Presumably, I'm going to guess, it's further than we think the little pool of vomit is. Yeah, it kind of fill with all the droplets and splash most of this bit of the studio. No. Wow. Yeah, but you won't be able to see it, so when you come to clean up the main bulk, you'd stand in it, spread it everywhere. So you're just carrying on, but even when you think you've cleaned it all up? Yeah, yeah. Can I... Why is he called Larry? Uh, because the head of the system's called Airway Larry. So it's for when medical students are practising laryngoscopies. Yeah, so I think obviously. That's where they're Larry. Oh. Is that oh. Do the medical students not provide enough vomit? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> they can't do it on command, so, yeah. you know. It needs to be one, two, three, go. <laughs> yeah. Like that. OK, so now, um, we can't have Larry actually vomit. You'll be very pleased to know. Oh, However... Oh, this is... <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Lauren. We do have a film of uh, Larry. We're going to have the film without sound, but if any of you lovely people would like to join in and create the sound <laughs> that you imagine Larry might make, then help yourself. Why, yeah. of course. Yeah, let's have it. <laughs> let's... You only had to ask one. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, I'm dying. <laughs> it's coming out of my ass as well. <laughs> And you can't turn around quick enough because you know it's going <laughs> to... <laughs> oh, no, oh, no, no. <laughs> oh, God, God. Flush it, flush it, flush me. Yes, I'm so sorry, darling. <laughs> Here's another interesting fashion for royals. Louis XIV, he had a fashion that courtiers should have one long fingernail. Why was that? My husband's got one special toenail for scratching his eczema. It's awful, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Is that the sort of thing you're after? <laughs> I feel in this show you and I are in danger of oversharing. <laughs> And you seem to be fine with that, though, that's... Yeah, as long as he, he keeps it to himself, I'm all right. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he hasn't really, has he, now? No. <laughs> <laughs> He's only told me quite recently, and we've been together for nearly 15 years. <laughs> so there's nothing I can do about it now, is no. what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm stuck with it. No, except maybe pay more attention in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so the one long fingernail, what do we reckon? Is that a cane that he's leaning on, or is that the fingernail? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't have the fingernail, so it was the courtiers who had Everyone the else had to have the fingernail. Yes. Is it to do with his anus? Let me just get that out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing in your head? <laughs> <laughs> just imagine it. <laughs> Away from this show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say 
eating termite so and a <laughs> fingernail up Louis the Fourteenth's arse. Now, so uh, he, it's in this, <laughs> in this reality, he said, yes. "I want any of you to be ready." Yeah. It, there's no yes. telling who I'm going to ask no. to stick their fingernail up my head. And, <laughs> so I want so you all to grow it. He... I don't want it to be a specialism. <laughs> I want to say, you, now! <laughs> <laughs> Why might you put a mirror next to a lift? Any thoughts about this? We're talking about waiting? Next to a lift or in a lift? No, next to it. It's to do with you looking at yourself. People dislike waiting in line, but they do like looking at themselves. <gasps> People don't complain if the lift takes a long time to arrive, if they can constantly see themselves. I love this picture, though. So we had an experiment to see if we could recreate this with all of you. So let's have a look. Are we able to do that? Uh, there, there. What do you think? Oh. I know! Oh, it's top of the box from the 70s. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's like a giant centipede. That's brilliant. That's really good fun. Wow. And we do like and we do like the swimming thing where we go. This is brilliant. beginning to look like a Bollywood movie. <laughs> Have you heard about the carrot swindle? Do you know about the What's carrot, the carrot swindle? swindle? I know about the carrot swindle. When you go to your self-serve checkout, everything you put on for way, you just press carrots. Really? Yeah. What, so you'd be like buying an anvil and you'd press carrot? <laughs> yeah, so you put down... What's an expensive vegetable? Prosecco. <laughs> Are you paying everything for his carrots? I'm not doing it, Josh. I'm a very Where honest you... customer. Where did you learn this? From a reindeer. <laughs> because what, what they found yeah. the supermarkets, the reason they started to become suspicious was because they were selling millions of tonnes of carrot <laughs> and that thousands and thousands of bottles of Prosecco were being stolen. <laughs> Wow. So they started to watch people, and sure enough, people just putting all their washing on the thing, pressing carrots and putting it... All their washing? Oh, and all their washing. People were putting all their shopping on yes. the thing, pressing yeah. carrots, and they've got a six bags, they paid 12 quid. Theft from self-service tills has doubled in the last four years, so you should not put this information out. I'm doing it for Sainsbury's. Yeah. Yes. But, Alan, Alan, when you put your washing on, what should you press? <laughs> <laughs> So, you've oh. each got a quilt <laughs> and a cover. Right. Oh. Uh, so, we're going to have a very quick uh, competition. <laughs> Couldn't be easier. Um, to see who can uh, be quickest. Hang on, hang on. Uh, I haven't done, done the bow yet. I haven't got my okay. key. Get your quilt out. <laughs> 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 we're going to do oh, it no, all wait, at the same wait, time. Wait, wait. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, is everybody. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Opening, Sandy. Hang on. Can, we, can we open it? Where do we start? Uh, uh, Farming thing. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Oh, no, go. I'm not ready. I'm ah. not ready. Ah. I'm nowhere near ready. Oh, oh. my God. <laughs> I did, yeah, I mean... Jimmy, wow, wow. I think I'm not really... the only one who's amazed it stayed on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Uh, let's talk about different kind of cues, so when you are on the phone... Oh, okay, yeah. What's mm. the worst thing about that, do you reckon? It's when the computer doesn't get your accent. I get that a lot. I used to ring the Odeon film line. <laughs> I used to work for them, be careful. The Odeon film line to find out this, this is a going back, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Out, <laughs> that's the job I have. the times of the films. And this is even say, before DVDs. Yes, before yeah. <laughs> So, which Odeon cinema are you interested in? Yeah. And I would say, Holloway. Yeah. And it would say, did you say Manchester? Every time! <laughs> yeah. That's exactly it. Well, that was 
similarity between yeah. the two words. There's almost no letters that are the same. Actually, that was just one of us. <laughs> <laughs> Bolton, did you say Baghdad? <laughs> Greek kylix, so this is a wonderful thing. It's a shallow drinking cup for wine. It's a similar to one of these cups, um, but it had obscene pictures painted on the inside which were gradually revealed. <gasps> <laughs> We've censored this because, you know, they would have things like a couple having sex, a man wiping his bottom, <laughs> uh, naked people, and then an eye cup. So it's a wide mug with eyes and sometimes a nose painted on the outside. It looked like you were wearing a mask uh, <laughs> when you drank it. And sometimes uh, they painted ships on the inside, so it looked like the ships were sailing on the wine as you drank it. I think we should have more fun with yeah. cups. <laughs> How great that you're drinking, you're getting pissed, and at the bottom of the cup is something that you're probably going to do. <laughs> like an instruction manual? Yes, yeah, like, you know what, this is where this is heading. Oh, I feel like that just kind of cuts to I would chase. be really annoyed, though, if I got to the end of my cup and I was like, so what, now I have to learn the flute as well? <laughs> Okay, so I just want to see what kind of audience we have in tonight. <laughs> Who would like us to remove the pixels? Put your hands up. Yeah. Oh, Who's Brilliant. quite happy with it being censored? <laughs> like, <listen. laughs> oh my! No one at all. all right, let's the remove the audience. pixels and see what's behind. It's going to be a flute. Literally oh. nothing. <laughs> Genuine disappointment. <laughs> what a deed. Oh. Especially for him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Our queuing advice is to really rile people up by ignoring the instructions at an airport and standing on the left of an underground escalator. Um, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's really upsetting. No, no, no. yeah. That's the you know, only that's thing I care about after Brexit. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's only down here that that's a problem. That is London. It's, it's, a it's, real it's London. only London. Yeah. It's not even a. It's not, not even questioned anywhere. Else. Stand wherever you want. You stand wherever you want. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. not a thing. <laughs> Do what you want. It's just a thing down here. Stand on the right. <laughs> not not in anywhere else. <laughs> Fucking stand on the right. <laughs> Isn't it lower if you're a woman than a man? Slightly higher for a woman. Slightly higher. Yeah, it was one or the other, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Just <laughs> 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 go all the way with that. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, there's that stereotype of, like, turn up the heating, but I'm too hot, babes! It uh, is an issue that office temperatures are set to male averages yeah. as opposed to female averages. Do you know a fact about Christine Lagarde, who's the head I don't know any man. facts about Christine Lagarde. Oh, but you're, well, you're about to bloody get one, Sandy. Let's swap chairs! Um, <laughs> <laughs> Not your glasses for a second. Okay. Oh, do you want some cards? Yeah. Oh just... no, that's got all the answers on there. Haven't <laughs> uh, of course, the, the interesting about uh, Christine Lagarde that she used to do was um, <laughs> that she. <laughs> <laughs> uh, please stop laughing, darling. I I'm trying to get to the fact. Um, <laughs> <laughs> What's the most dangerous thing to do in bed? Tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Reverse cowgirl. <laughs> <laughs> they had that locked and loaded. There was some suggestion you might say that, darling. <laughs> Is it a particular favourite? Yeah. How did they know? Am I the only person who noticed that you said DVD? I did say DVD. Yeah. Who uses DVDs? Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> what are you? Unbelievable. Everyone just glanced over that like that wasn't a crazy thing to say. Like, I saw you. You saw you. DVDs. I'm still on VHS. Uh, so. Yeah. <laughs> I played a cassette only yesterday. And you know what happened? It got stuck. <laughs> of course it did. <laughs> Do you remember when cassettes used to stretch if you'd played them for too long? You get a little pen, little pencil inside. <laughs> oh, it's oh, good time. Good time. Well, they get stuck <laughs> if you're driving and you yes. pop one out while you're driving. And then the whole the tape. <laughs> this is just my best tape. Don't pull it. Don't pull it. Don't pull. I can't pull over. It's the M4. Get out. Get out. Get out with a pencil. Get out. 
Yeah, wind down, wind down. You know, come on, you're four years old, you can do this. <laughs> Anybody have a mnemonic to remember the planets in order? Yes. It's Mercury, yep. Venus, <laughs> Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. Uranus, Neptune. Thank you, darling, that's perfect. Um, <laughs> that is the order, and... Pluto uh, doesn't count. It's actually a Disney character. Yes, that's right. <laughs> uh, that is the order of the planets, and one is often taught it at school, so many volcanoes emit mulberry jam sandwiches under normal pressure, or my very easy method just speeds up naming planets, so there were... I couldn't get past vagina, though. <laughs> I've got moist vagina expected, might just steam up nighty. <laughs> So, weirdly, that's probably the one I'm going to remember. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Alice, you've got one? Mine's quite depressing. OK. Mum's vacant expression means Jane sulks and less notice. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you were a jolly girl at school. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite is Mary's virgin explanation made Joseph suspect upstairs neighbour. <laughs> Right, Alan and Ashling, I've got an EastEnders style script for you. I'm actually going to take a small part in this myself. Oh! <laughs> I know. So, you know, big gestures, big pausing. Here we go. OK. Oh, Ashling. I'm having some real body rubble with me, old trouble and strife. <laughs> in my Lucy Locket. <laughs> oh, Alan. <laughs> you absolute donor. <laughs> you need to be more careful. Now, what's this all about? <laughs> Say it You can't. You kiss you, it's you. Yes, <laughs> yeah, this cow. You're not my mum. <gasps> Actually. <laughs> <laughs> she is. Sad. Uh, very cool. <laughs> and that's all from QI tonight. I leave you with a quip from French poet. Joseph Roux. A fine quotation is a diamond on the finger of a man of wit and a pebble in the hand of a fool. Good night. <laughs>